Hello, beautiful. Today we're watching people color their hair green. Yes, you heard that correctly, green. Green is something that I have never had fully on my head before. Green all around, I don't think it's for me. Green is a really hard color to pull off, and if you can do it, I applaud you. That's sick. Let's see if the people in today's video can pull off green hair. Okay guys, we are going green today. Whoa, Kirby. First of all, I like the name. It reminds me of that video game. There's a lot going on here. She has really dark brown roots, orangey red mids and ends. Her hair has been bleached and bleached and bleached and colored and colored and colored and she is going green. Now green and red are opposite on the color wheel. That means if she puts green directly over the red, she is going to create brown. Cause they cancel each other out. So she's gonna need to remove this orangey red pigment before she then goes in with the green. Let's see what she ends up doing. All right, I'm gonna be nitpicky today because you know what I feel like. I'm kind of cranky today. You know what happens when I'm pissed off and annoyed while filming these videos? I just take it out on everybody that I'm watching. Get ready, and I'm so sorry for you. So she's starting off with the front hairline. Not exactly, she did the middle, she did the back a little bit, but then she's going right on the front hairline with that bleach. Don't do that. What you're gonna wanna do is do the front hairline last because that hair is the most fragile, the most fine, the most thin hair on your entire head. So make sure you do all of your head before you then go in on the hairline. That'll reduce the amount of breakage you see when you bleach your hair. But I do have to say, she is doing a wonderfully fabulous job at applying this lightener. The way she's sectioning this like a pro and making it look so easy is quite impressive and beautiful to watch. Like just perfectly like, whew across the head. Mm, beautiful. My roots are pretty stubborn these days. I am just using a 20 volume developer with the quick bleach from Sally's. We love Sally. Speaking of Sally, make sure you shop X Mono Color at Sally Beauty. It is now available. If you didn't already know, it is very exciting. I love me some Sally Beauty. And I know you guys do too. I started in the back and came to the front. I did not show you guys me bleaching the back of my head. You honestly can't see it while I'm doing it and it is very tedious and difficult. I do have to say, I'm really excited about her going to green because the orange with her complexion, not that people care or give a fuck about their complexion compared to their hair color, right? A lot of people don't. Okay, no. Most people want the most optimal hair color for their complexion, most. But some people who do fashion colors don't give a fuck because it's an alternative lifestyle. They're not trying to conform with the norms and I totally get it and I totally fuck love it but clearly the orange is not working with her pink skin green is one of those tones that kind of like look good on all tones it's kind of like a neutral part of the rainbow it's a little bit weird but i feel like green is going to compliment her a lot more than the orange will i gotta be honest with you i'm taking smaller sections within the section and making sure that each little strand is coated without going too far over the already colored processed hair she's eating it up. I'm not trying to go too far over that line because I don't want the color to get over processed with the 20 volume. It's great that she is throwing the section over, horizontally slicing it, and then painting the back and the front of that section. So she gets even saturation on both sides. I absolutely love that. The way I love that. <laughs> if you want to make this even more perfect and make sure you got every single last bit of hair and make it look like a professional piece of work, if you take horizontal sections while you're going in with the lightener the first time, take vertical sections the second time and cross check your work. That way we can make sure every single hair strand is covered in bleach. I did not want to color remove, mainly because I've just been having very mixed results. And since I was going in the complete opposite color on like the color wheel, I decided to just bite the bullet and do a bleach throughout my ends to take the vibrancy of the orange away so that the vibrancy of the green could come through. That is a great idea because you're gonna really wanna get all that orange out of your hair before you then go green. She knows that it will turn brown if she doesn't. But I do let my roots sit it for about 30, 35 minutes. My natural hair has been pretty stubborn lately. I'm a little worried about those yellow parts though. They feel like they're going to overprocess and snap off and die and fall on the floor and she is going to cry and life is gonna be terrible, really. <laughs> No, she'll be fine. I think you never really know what these videos do. I just comb through my hair to make sure that there are no knots. And this is mainly to get it ready for that volume 10 bleach. Detangled hair accepts bleach a little bit better. Okay, I'm not sure what developer she's using because I 
wasn't really listening that well. You know, guys, sometimes I just, I don't feel like applying myself. I think she was using 20 volume or 30 on her end, which is fine. I mean, let's see how long she leaves it on for. It should be fine. You know, sometimes we don't really know, but I'm glad she covered her whole head in bleach and I'm glad she didn't do a bleach wash. Bleach washes just don't cut it. They just do not take out enough color out of the hair and it just becomes a bigger mess than what you started with. Like you gotta know how to do a bleach rinse correctly to do them or else you're just gonna waste your time doing them over and over again with little to no result. Once I shower it out, which I shampooed twice, I am now toning it. It was still quite orange whenever I came out of the shower. So I toned it with some blue shampoo twice and that led me to here, this very faded orange yellowy hair. Okay, whoa. So we toned it with blue shampoo, which is fine. She definitely has yellow hair now, right? She has yellow and she has orange and there is a lot going on. Now to cover this up and get it to be a nice even result, she's gonna wanna do a very dark forest green color. I think it'll work. Some of that green pigment will turn brown because of the added orange. If any of the pieces of hair are really deep orange, it'll catch kind of brown. Oh God, it's gonna be a little muddy. I was very nervous that my hair was still way too orange to accept the green color. And I was very nervous that it was going to come out like a muddy brown or like a dark greeny brown color and not as vibrant as I wanted to. If her hair is very porous, which it looks to be a bit dry, sometimes you can get away with kind of breaking the rules with the color wheel. When your hair is porous as fuck, it tends to just latch onto anything and it tends to be okay. We'll see though. She is putting in the work with this color application, I have to say. Like, oh my God. She is doing every little section, section by section. And uh, uh. honestly, I would just put all over my whole fucking head and comb that shit through. I would do four quadrants, put it on the quadrant, section it out and really make sure it's all in there with a comb. You don't need to do this precise when it's just a semi-permanent color. But my hair is really dry in this video, so it was soaking up the cream color like nobody's business. We're on the same page, see? And I'm just going around and making sure that each strand is completely saturated and combed through. With semi-permanent color, it is so important that you saturate, 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 saturate. Some of the semi-permanent colors like x Mono Color is very conditioning. So more is more. And the more you put on, the more that pigment is gonna show and the more conditioning benefits you're gonna get and the more just luxurious the treatment is going to be. Now, when your color is fully in your head, every strand is coated, pin it up with a clip or whatever, cover it with a shower cap. And then I highly suggest if you do your hair at home to invest in a portable hood dryer. I sit under my hood dryer for about 30 minutes and it really just like locks in the color so much better. It lasts so much longer. A hood dryer on semi-permanent color, not necessarily recommended. I mean, I don't hate this because of the fact that she put a bag over her head. So it's keeping in some of that moisture and it's kind of warming up that moisture. The thing we don't want with semi-permanent color or really any color at all is dryness. We just don't want that color to become dry or else you're not gonna get as great of results. But this should be okay. It just wasn't really necessary. And here you go. For those people that are asking, yes, I do use a little bit of shampoo and conditioner in the shower. I know many bottles of color will tell you you don't need to shampoo it out. I just think my hair feels nicer. But I love this color. I loved how it turned out. It was so vibrant, so great. Oh my God. What a transformation. I don't know about you, but I feel like this color suits her so much better. It takes a person, you know, a really cool human being to pull off green color like this. And I think you did it flawlessly. Congratulations. It looks so vibrant and so even, and it was so, so well done. And I love the makeup that you combined with the color. It looks spectacular. I am obsessed. An amazing job. I was worried for a second. Oh my God, what do we have next? Listen, I have not had the best day. Whenever I'm not feeling good, I do this fun little thing. I change the color of my hair. All right, another situation where we're going from orange to green, which are uh, like close to most opposite on the color wheel. And that's a scary little task. And we're gonna do it again. And we're gonna have to remove the color before we then go in with the green. And let's see what she does. Is she gonna bleach it? Is she gonna do a color remover? What's gonna happen here? I don't know. I have to get this orange out of my hair. Don't really know how to do that. Don't even know if that's really possible. Anything's possible with hair color. That was a lie. Not everything is possible. I got this color prep. Okay, we're doing color remover, I believe. Color prep. I don't know what color prep is. It looks like 
like it's called remover. Mm hmm okay, okay. Rinse away dull hair color buildup. All right, it's like a, I don't know. I didn't say a whole lot up here. No, I don't, no, I don't know. I feel like it's not quite color remover. It might be more of like a, thing. I don't know a whole lot about color remover to be honest with you. So I've actually never done one of these color prep things to try and get this out, but I'm gonna try. Now, of course we can use color remover, which we are. It's risky is what it is. Now it might work. It might maybe not. We never really know. Sometimes color remover is really magical. Sometimes it really sucks. I love the guy Tang one. I've said this many times before, but I love the guy Tang one. I love a Malibu CPR treatment too. Do, do, do. Guy Tang is more powerful and lightens your base, but the CPR one by Malibu is super gentle and does not lighten your base and removes most pigment. You could probably get out most of the pigment in your hair with just the Malibu one. Honestly, she didn't really need to do color remover. The orange is light enough to cover with green and it not to make brown or make any kind of poopy color, um, but she will need to lighten her root and her kind of like mid root area. Okay, so she is putting the color remover all around her head and it looks dry. It's like, <gasps> Dry, 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 dry. I hate when shit is dry. You know, there should really be never a time when you're coloring your hair where your hair is dry looking. It just means you didn't apply enough. It should always be nicely saturated, all right? It's just not a place where you wanna skimp out. You know, we wanna really put enough color on the head to make a difference. Um, so it looks dry and we're not exactly sectioning the hair. We're kind of just applying over the top. Um, so don't love that either. I would like if we uh, sectioned the hair and then apply the color remover because color remover is kind of important that you do it precisely and nicely. Um, but we'll see what happens here. Ultimately, we will see. You and I we will see. All right, we are bagging the hair to keep in some of that heat to expand that cuticle, open it up, let go of some of those artificial color molecules, which I do like. So great job with that. I'm back and my hair is yellow. Okay. Well, yellow is much better than orange. Let's ask you guys, what happens when you mix green and yellow. You get kind of a more lighter tone, more neon green. I think would look sick on her. Depending on which semi permanent color she chooses right now, we'll see if it's gonna turn out really green or not. But she does have very porous hair, it looks like. Like she has kind of a wavy pattern to her hair naturally, which means it's naturally drier. And it's now been processed like three or four times or five or six or seven or eight or nine, 10 or I mean, who knows how many times. So it is dry and compromised. So it is probably going to latch on to these colors molecules very easily. Kind of bring me back to when I used to be blonde, but it's just really yellow and gross. Are we going for like an ombre? Because the top of your head is not lightened. I hate to break it to you, but it's not. There's a hair dye. It's phantom green. This is kind of cool. I don't know if you can tell, but there's like blue and green. Yes, often cyan printed color, it's more of like a bluish green because often people never really have a white tone to start with, right? They're not applying it to pure white hair. I know when I'm trying to formulate a cyan printed color that is green, I tend to put a lot more blue in it than I would naturally want to do. But that's because most people have Homer not putting these green colors on top of perfectly white hair. They're putting it on top of yellow. And um, if we put a little blue in there, it cancels the yellow and deposits the green on top, which makes it a nice pure green color. If you want a really nice pure green color, like I just said, you should try super green next time. Okay, super green is the most pure, gorgeous green tone ever. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to start with the ends because the ends develop faster than the roots. Just a little something I learned on the World Wide Web. I know you learned that from me. And um, this is not one of those instances that that actually matters because you are using cyan printed color. So there's no peroxide. The heat from your scalp is not going to affect the color because it is more of a conditioning base. If that made no sense to you, just leave it there. But just remember that if you're using cyan printed color, it doesn't matter if you do your roots or your ends first. You can do whatever you want, however you want. It's super easy to apply and do it home. All right, we are working around the head. She is applying and applying and applying. Dot Great. Lee. No, I, just, I gotta say, it's not in a great ap application method. I don't love it. And that, that I'm gonna be honest about. And it's okay. And not everything's gonna be great in life. I wish she started from the bottom and worked her way up because it's just easier that way, guys. If you work from the bottom and you go up, you don't have to flip the hair over and move things out of the way and everything gets kind of messy. Otherwise, if you just start from the bottom and you just layer the hair on top of itself as you go up, things just stay a lot cleaner and more organized. And cleaner and more organized coloring methods ends up with better results. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, so she put it on top of her roots as well, which her roots are more red. And she's putting green on top of it. So we know that green and red make brown. And I actually think it's a brilliant idea because she's gonna end up with some pretty nice natural looking root color and then some really bright green ends, which I think is a really great idea for her. Here it is. We green. I actually really like it and I can't stop looking at myself because I'm conceited. Because I look cute. Oh my gosh. What the fridge biscuit? Was that the same person? Who the hell was that? That was a beautiful transformation, I must say. Um, your roots looked like the perfect black brown color because we mixed the green on top of the red hair, the orangey red hair. It made this beautiful blackish color. And then your ends came out so pure green. It was magical. It reminds me of a beautiful matcha drink. No, really, you did a great job. That was incredible. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah! Always wanted green hair, but I'm too afraid to do the whole thing. Afraid to do the whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. Do the whole thing. Oh, okay. Got it. I was like, what is going on here? She was making Making it known that um she accidentally keeps on coloring her hair more and more and more and more green, which I think is a great idea because she I just know she would rock green. This is where we are starting for this transformation. I'll give you a brief rundown of the state of my hair currently. Okay, she's starting with half green hair. Sometimes this is just like not ideal because you have just so much to deal with with a palette like this. You have the underneath that's green, you have the roots coming in that are like an inch long, they're black, and then you have the entire top of the had just natural black color or box dye black color or box dye brown. I don't know what her case is, but you have to kind of treat every area differently. You're gonna to wanna to do the mid lengths and ends first. If it's virgin application, you're gonna to wanna to do the roots first. You know, there's just so many factors and it just gets really complicated very quickly. The brown is a demi-permanent 5N color. The ends haven't been dyed in months. All right, well, I'm glad she's used demi-permanent color to do the dark brown color on the top of her head. That'll be a lot easier to lighten out than a permanent color, obviously. I think we all know that by now. Good luck still. Sometimes even the demi-permanent color can really stick on there. All right, we are doing the mids and ends first, so great job with that. And we're using foils, Ooh, and she looks like she's using foils correctly, which people never do. She's like using really long foils, which is great. It makes it much easier when you don't have to wrap the hair up in the foil and fold it and do all that complicated shit. It just gets wild and annoying. But if you want to use like a 10 volume or even less on your roots, like seven volume on your roots, and then go in with a 30 volume on your ends, you can also do that. You just can't apply the same root and end formula. You need a less powerful lightener on your root than the ends. But it is always the safest bet to do the mids and ends before you do the roots. Today, I'm using a 25 volume developer with my bleach on the ends of my hair, and I'm doing my absolute best to get it on every single strand. She is doing the work, she's putting in the work, and I love to see it. She's getting it on every single motherfucker. Strand ever. Obviously, I'm leaving the roots out as they process faster from the heat on my scalp, in addition to it being 100% pure virgin hair. Oh my god, this is so crazy. She is really going in there. Oh boy, I don't know what's gonna happen. I've never bleached my full head of hair before, so I was super nervous about missing a spot. Okay, she's doing this really well. Why is this so perfect? Why is it so perfect? This is going to be the longest process ever. She's doing like a quarter of her hair at a time. Holy shit. How are you guys with the patience for this? How are we doing the back of her head with no mirror? What? My only issue here is she's kind of going up to the roots. Like she's not leaving like an inch out at the top of her hair. She's going pretty close, like a centimeter to the root. And I don't love that. We definitely need to leave some room up there to let it breathe, to then apply to the root. You will get heat from the scalp about an inch down from the root. So don't apply too close, especially with foils because the foil plus the heat from the scalp is just too much heat for your roots to handle. You will see breakage and you will die. I think she rinsed off off the left side. I don't know how it ended up being a dark blonde. I wish we lightened it much further than that because you're not gonna get a very pure green with that color. Ugh. This is how it ended up looking. Pretty even, little bit of red up at top, but that again is just because that was the newest dye. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> she could have gotten this so much lighter with 30 volume and if she left it on for a longer amount of time and saturated heavily in each of those foils, something went amiss. Here is me the next day with more sections doing the same process as before, except I am saturating each section. Round two. She said she's gonna saturate even more this time. Thank God, because we couldn't be here for any longer today. We gotta reduce the amount of processes we do. If you just apply enough color the first time with the right developer, you won't have to do it a million times. I mean, listen, she is going in there and doing everything very precisely, which I do love to see. And now we're going in on the root and applying to the root. Let's see how she does. I gotta say, the organization of this whole method was very beautiful. Like she did the mids and ends, she didn't touch the green at the bottom, she didn't relighten the green. People do this shit all the time where they relighten the color that they want to stay in their hair. Like, I don't know. People do all kinds of crazy stuff and you're just like, that didn't make much sense, now did it. But she didn't do that. She actually did a great job. There are still some parts in there that are a little bit darker than I would prefer. Still not very light for f sake. Come on. There's a dark spot I'm talking about. <sighs> Why are there dark spots? Why are there dark spots? We did so much and then there ended up being dark spots. Oh. Hey guys, why the f is there dark spots? I did a test strand just to see how it would react, but ended up just re-bleaching the spots that I wasn't happy with. We are on the third round of bleach now. I'm tired. It is time now that I start my descent into becoming the Joker himself. I did get all of the roots done with the darker green first. We are going in with the green color now and getting everything on there evenly and nicely. Ah! What's gonna happen? Do we think this is gonna look good with her complexion? Like, I think so. She has pretty pink, kind of neutral looking skin. So I feel like this is gonna complement her skin very nicely. It is safe to say that I can now live out my swamp fairy tree hugger dream of having green bean hair. Everybody's today just rocking the green hair. Her roots do look more blue, more like that aqua, like greenish, like ocean green, blue. The words just aren't coming to me today, I'm sorry. But you get what I mean. It's a little bit more of that turquoise color. And then her ends are kind of more of that pure green. I think it looks really nice on her and really complements her skin tone and looks so cool. You look so cool. I love it. Scary, but great job. Well, everybody's looks today turned out spectacular, but the road to get to those looks was bumpy and rocky and scary. My heart can't take it anymore. But anyways, if you want to check out Xmodo Color, you can do so with the links right down below or go to xmodohair.com. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.